Hi, I'm Clay James Enos, and um, I'm a plein air painter, and I guess my New York story is that I'm a born New Yorker. Um, I think that the beginning of my art always came from looking and um, observing what was around me. I think that New York is a really unique place because you can um, you can kind of stop and see in between all of people's busy lives and there's an environment around you, there's great museums. I think that my love of art always came from looking at art and museums first and from art history. And it, was a, it took a long time for me to graduate out of that and into making work. And um, I think that, yeah, New York is a place where um, unexpected things can happen. Um, I met Sophocles because I met um, his co-curator on the street. I was walking down the street with an easel on my back and um, this woman came up to me and she said, are you an artist? And I couldn't say no because I had an easel on my back. <laughs> and, um, and that is where it started and that was the first show, September Fest. And I think that New York is a place where you can make connections. Well, I, um, I grew up in the Lower East Side. Um, so that was always kind of a, um, a famed place for artists. Um, I think that there were a lot of art experiences around me, you know, people were turning lots into community gardens and I would go and play with in them and, as a baby and um, and also there was a lot of history there, you know, that was where all of the abstract expressionists had come out of and then later on in the 80s with Herring and Basquiat and Martin Long and all of the artists who came there. Um, I was not interested in art until I became much older though. Um, I went to school for literature and I studied art history. I kind of, I discovered a love of art history in college. Um, and I really wanted to become a professional academic. Uh, fast forward to the years later, you know, like having iffy employment, coming out of school and, um, and trying to find a career. Um, I spent a couple of years trying to become a professional academic and while I was waiting I was looking a lot. I was in museums and kind of experiencing a lot of art and um, I started making because I had this kind of feeling that I could contribute maybe to that um, continuum and that history and that maybe my own voice was important, not maybe as someone who records the history of the past but contributes to the present and the future while still carrying a knowledge of the past and things that had come before and communicating that to people. So that, that's where it comes from, I think. I, um, I'm self-taught as well. I took a couple of classes at the Art Students League, which I really re recommend as a resource for artists who are looking to hone their craft. Um, and I read a lot of books about painting. Um, I would say that my process begins with wandering. Um, of course, there's a bit of premeditation because you have to carry all of your paints and your paint box with you and you have to um, be prepared to stand out in the sun for maybe three to four hours at a time. Um, there, are, there are considerations, I think, when you're a painter, you want to know that the sun is going to be behind a tree and that you're going to be in the shade. But I think that I try not to um, come back to a place that I had seen where I wanted to make a painting usually it'll be more or less random. It'll be some place in the city, it'll be a neighborhood that I want to get closer to. And I think that 
one part of my art that maybe doesn't even come through but is fascinating is that people will come up to you on the street while you're working and while you're painting on the street. I work from life as well. Um, is that people will come up to you and they'll tell you what they think about art, they'll tell you their, uh, their own ideas, or they'll tell you that, you're a that they're a painter. And, um, and that's interesting to me. I've learned things about people's neighborhood. People have opened it, their windows behind me and talked to me. Um, and I like that. I think that it takes things out of just the gallery and the studio and it allows an artist to be part of a community. Um, I think that if you're a person living in the city and you have to relocate, or you're a new um, addition to a neighborhood, you maybe don't make the same connections as you do if you're an artist, because you're really out there and you have the opportunity to communicate with people. Um, so I think that the other considerations of my process are um, I try to finish paintings in one sitting. Usually um, I'll do a sketch first with, a, with just a lot of medium, work quickly, and then, um, and then I'll fill it in as I go. Um, I've tried to work on paintings again, but they never turn out very well. Um, it's a, one of those weird things where I think the authenticity is in the struggle of having to work outside and having a park, uh, truck park right in front of you while you're working and then having to go talk to the truck driver and see if they're going to pull away or what. Um, and I like Instagram because it allows you to locate a piece. Just a simple thing like the geolocator in Instagram allows you to say, this painting was painted here. It was just painted on this day. There's an immediacy there. And I think that maybe if there was one thing that my process boiled down to, it's just going for it and doing something immediately, not making all of this preparation and all of these other things. Um, I think that there is some preparation that you need, but just going out and doing it quickly. Um, I think the best marketing tool is never shutting up about the fact that you're an artist. Um, I, I think that the worst possible thing that could happen is someone could say, oh, you're an artist? I, I would have never known. Um, you, I personally work in the art business. I'm an art installer. I, I work for a museum. I've worked for many galleries over the years. And um, I think that just being around that world as much as possible um, creates connections. You meet people. If you do something that requires you to look and to judge things aesthetically, like a as an art installer, then people will know that you're someone, you're an aesthetic person, that you um, think with your eyes, and people will talk to you about it, and I think that as an artist, marketing your work isn't just about, you know, putting it out there for people to say, hey, I like what I see, I want to buy that. I think that that's maybe, maybe someone will buy a piece and that's great, but I think that it's really about talking to people, making people aware of who you are and how you're thinking through your work and um, and that's the most important thing that's that's that builds a connection between you and people who collect your work and they will care about what you do um, and I think that's a very important component of being an artist to have that depth there um, I think the first thing that I'd like to achieve through art is um, a sense of community, of belonging to um, a group that includes peers who are artists whose work I love and want to support, and to, go, to not feel like, it's, like you're going alone, and to have other artists who you're fans of and who you support. I mean, uh, meeting Sophocles and Thais, these are the kind of connections that I think are really important to keeping you go, uh, going as an artist. It's not just about sales, it's about a feeling of belonging, I think. 
Um, and I think that as, as far as my work goes, um, I don't really want to ever settle into doing one thing. I want there to be surprises along the way. I want to be surprised by what I make. Um, the minute something feels easy, I'll know that it's the wrong direction and that something needs to change. You know, I could end up doing photography in four years, I don't know. To, 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 to draw and young. Um, oh, when you started drawing? When you was young? When younger? did I start? Yeah, when yeah. I was young. I mean, I have uh, in my collection, personal collection, pieces from when I was like two, three, you know? So, like, form and color has always been my preferred language. Yeah. And what, well, um, I want one more. more. What the, what do art mean to you? Art. Like what does it mean to you? Mean to you? What is? Um, I mean, creation as a whole, you know, transcending just visual art, but creating in my life and everything is like where I can be the most free and the most myself. So, art means freedom, I guess. God bless. Thank you. Good luck with your art. Thank you. Good question. So, my question is That's a good for question. all these energies on these canvases. I have a career which is a substance abuse counselor. I do that because, like I said, I'm a recovering addict myself. And I do these things no more than like, as far as putting substance in my body. So that helps me pay the bills. And this, whenever I sell a canvas, I sell it. But that's basically how I do it. It is all about balance. And I'm a hustler, man. <laughs> I'm going to find a way to make it. However I got to do it. Just what I am. Too, it's about like finding a nine to five or a main source of income, I guess, that fits your lifestyle. Like, I did administrative work for a while, like working in an office and working for somebody, but now I'm a server, so I get more hours. It's like less hours for me, but more hours making money on the books. And then uh, when I go home, I sacrifice and I don't really sleep necessarily, and I work for myself. And like, I have to develop that mindset of like, okay, when I go to work, I'm not, like I'm giving up time that I could be putting into my crafts, but I'm taking that money, reinvesting it in myself, buying my tools, and then I go to work when I get home. So it's just like a cycle that sort of fuels itself. So, right over here. Um, as an artist myself, music inspires me. So my question would be, uh, if you were to choose one contemporary artist or a musician, uh, who would it be exploring each of them? They have wow. to be contemporary? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! There's a And it's visual artists or well, musical artists? Musician. Oh, okay. I, I'll say it real quick. I love Jay-Z. Nice. The reason I love him is because he comes from the bottom. He comes from Marcy Projects. And he's one of the richest people in America right now. He's a billionaire. So I like his, his, his grind. And I like when he started doing illegal things. And then he turned it around and now he's legal. And you know, the way I look at it, I read a lot of books. Like I said, if you do the study of in society, the biggest crooks are lawyers, you know, people on Wall Street. They are criminals. The only difference between them and a lot of people from the so-called ghettos is that they're educated criminals. They know all the loopholes. They know how to get around it. Right. So that's what I do. I read and, I, and, I, and I'm always learning something new. 
doing. I'm not perfect. My um, brother. To me, it would be, I think, I love to read, so it would be, I cannot decide between Shakespeare and Dostoyevsky. Both of them are. Contemporary. Oh, contemporary. That's good. Oh, that's hard. I don't know. My favorite band is Green Day. <laughs> For me, it has to be Toriyama Akira or Akira Toriyama, if you're saying it in English. Uh, the creator of Dragon Ball and Dr. Slump. Because that's where my journey started with. It started with those tankobans or Japanese comic books that are collected in volumes. Basically, I would read those and I would just get excited. Something like would like bubble up inside me, like a lot of excitement. It was maybe the energy of the drawing and the energy of the story. But um, he's what got me started, and then from there, I would say Osamu Tezuka. He's uh, the creator of Astro Boy, and he made over 170,000 pages of comics in his life, as well as illustrations and animations. And that just came from more studying, like Hosi said, just studying your craft. Um, more studying deeper and deeper into my, uh, my art form and traveling to Japan. When I went to Japan, I didn't just make comics, I studied and went to all the museums that had the best Japanese comic art on the walls and libraries that had manga and comic art and I just studied all that stuff. So for me it's comic artists. Um, actually, um, the first painting series that I ever started was inspired by going to a concert. Uh, specific concerts, so good question. Um, it was, uh, the artist was a woman named Holly Herndon who does a lot of work with, um, with artificial intelligence to create music. Um, and I saw her do a Sandy Benefit concert and that was right around the time that I started painting was her paint Sandy. Um, I guess in addition to that, I'll say that I, uh, I'm a big concert goer and I'm always really glad that I'm not a musician because I'm glad that I don't have to invest in and lug around the heavy equipment that musicians do. <laughs>